Well, greetings. This is uh, week three, and this is lecture three of three. And so um, we're going to finish up our discussion on the rule of life uh, for this week. And I wanted to draw attention to just a few more elements. So we started this week by talking about how um, we need a structured, intentional, disciplined framework by which we can uh, lean into the person that we desire or dream to be in Christ. Um, we also talked about the things that keep us from living into that, the culture uh, that surrounds us. Uh, in, the, in the last uh, lecture, uh, we talked about um, how to make sure that the rule of life is consistent with who you are, the rhythms, the, the keeping it realistic, make sure, making sure it's refreshing. Uh, this lecture, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how uh, we, we, we write a rule of life in order to consistently evaluate and adjust as is, as is needed. Now, that might seem a bit odd given that it's, it's directive, disciplined, and intentional. Um, so if we're constantly adjusting it, then we're, are we just simply adjusting it to meet the whims and fancies and fickleness of our lives and then it doesn't matter at all. That's not what I'm talking about. And I wanna, I wanna share what I mean by adjusting as, as is appropriate. So first off, I wanna say this, that when I start talking to people about spiritual disciplines or spiritual formation, uh, they get excited that this, this is the answer that they've been looking for. It's gonna help sustain them, help them find longevity in their relationship and in their journey. And um, they sort of do the cannonball off the high dive into spiritual formation. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to implement this, I'm going to start doing this, I'm going to act out on this. And, and what ends up happening is that in their vigor, in their excitement to, to step into spiritual formation, they start appropriating all of these things that they're going to do and it, it's a new form of spiritualized busyness. And so they do, 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 do. And, and in the midst of all of that doing, there's never a chance to pause, reflect, and evaluate, to, to be introspective. And one of the things that we wanna do in our spiritual formation is to create the kind of balanced rhythms where we can step back, where we can look over the scope of our lives and really um, understand our journey within the context of who God has called and shaped us to be. Um, and, then, and then in that introspection to understand that's the place out of which um, our evaluations and our adjustments take place. So instead of seeing spiritual formation as a cannonball off the high dive, um, let's, let's talk about like slipping into the water slower and more intentional and kind of waiting around to find our place in the rhythms and the flow of the waves and as the tide comes in and goes out. So this is a sort of a sliding in rather than a leaping off and making some big splash. And so when you write your rule of life, you don't want to write it so busily with doing activities that it never gives you time to pause and to reflect. And part of what you want to reflect upon as you're writing your rule of life is understanding the concept of seasons. Now, I go over this with my staff all the time because we tend to speak in, in terms of grandiose statements like, I'm going to do this from here on out. And I want to stop and say, could it be that you're going to do this for this season of life? Because when you look at our journeys in terms of seasons, you, you recognize that seasons come and go. They roll in, they roll out. And with every change of season, you recognize that it's going to require something different. And so as you're building out this rule of life, you want to you want to be intentional to understand the season of life that you are in. Now, there's three primary seasons that I want to discuss for the purposes of this lecture. Uh, the first of which is the seasons of ministry. So, what season of ministry are you in? So, it, meaning, are you on staff? Are you looking to step into ministry? Are you a lead pastor? Each one of those roles in the season of ministry that you're in, or you missionary nonprofit leader, has certain space and time and expectations involved with it. So you want to write your rule of life conducive to the season of life you are in in your ministry. Secondly, when it comes to ministry, understand that certain ministries have rhythms in of themselves. So I don't want to write my rule of life completely disregarding the natural calendar of ministry. So for certain ministries, certain times of the year require extra effort. So 
if if summer's are a really difficult time for me, given my ministry, it's probably not the time to try to have a two or three day spiritual retreat because that's just going to feel like an added pressure. It might be that summers are a really tough time for me. So either going into the summer uh, because I'm an introvert and I need to equip myself for that time or coming out of the summer, I'm an extrovert, I'm gonna have exhausted everything that I have and I just need a chance to, to recoup, or however you understand your introversion and extroversion and how that impacts your ministry. But recognizing that they're, they're given the busyness, or, or how do we sanctify the rhythms of the calendar? So for instance, Christmas tends to be a busy time for ministry. So how do we understand Advent as a meaningful, rhythmic response to the busyness of Christmas? whereby starting four weeks earlier and leading our congregation, but, only, but also ourselves through this paced journey towards the Christmas celebration helps us to take in fully what this season truly means for us and how Advent in itself can serve us. So one of the things we've done at our church um, in the past is uh, during Advent, uh, at least twice a week at 5.30 in the morning, we open up the church for anybody who wants to come pray. So what that does is it creates a rhythm for our church, but it also creates a rhythm for us. And as a staff, we're able to lean in a couple days early, a couple days a week early in the morning at our church and really give um, thought and prayer to all that God has done, is doing, and will do in our community of faith and what exactly this journey towards the incarnation means Toward, for us or the the advent of Christ and his imminent return. Um, what does all that mean for us? And we're able to reflect upon that. Um, as we move towards Easter, instead of seeing Easter as just this really busy time for the church, how do I understand that in terms of Lent or Holy Week? And then what are the practices within Holy Week? Are there spiritual books that I can read moving towards Holy Week that will make that journey in my own personal life more impactful? So that's ministry. Then we want to think in terms of seasons for our family. What season are we in? If we've got young kids, that impacts and affects how we do. Are we single? Are we, are we married with no kids? In my, my wife and I's life, we're about to enter into our empty nest phase. And as empty nesters, there's going to be new rhythms and new practices that we will implement in our journeys because um, we will have certain freedoms that we have not had in the past, but we're also going to have to remain intentional in some of the areas uh, that we need to be intentional in as well. And I think that's important for us to recognize and realize um, along this journey as well. And so what season, because if you're, if you're heavy with times of solitude and, and getting away from people and you've got three or four little ones in your house and your wife is, or your husband's going to be stressed constantly because of, of your needing to be spiritual somewhere else, you need to build that in your rhythms. How do you sanctify and make holy that space that you spend with your family? Um, so there's there's the ministry seasons, then there's the family seasons, and then what about education? Some of I mean, some of you have aspirations of further education beyond just the master's program. Right now, you're in the master's program, which creates its own dynamic and seasons. So how does that play out? How can I take advantage of the rhythms that education creates for me? How am I aware of the apparent uh, obstructions that education can mean for me in the midst of what I'm trying to do is I'm leaning into what God has for me. Um, how do these all play themselves out? I think these are these are really important questions for us to ask. And, and so as you're building your real life, you want to be intentional about the season of ministry you're in, the season of life your family you're in, is in, and the season of life um, that you are in your education as well. And then uh, as you evaluate this and as seasons change, you want to continue to um, give yourself permission to adjust, not haphazardly or not fickly, by just like, I just don't want to do this, so I'm going to adjust this. No, by recognizing that in this season, I can't do this in the same way or in the same pattern or in the same means that I've done it in the past. And so to give myself freedom to live into fullness by adjusting those, those practices and rhythms, I actually serve to continue to refresh who I am and what God is calling me to in this deeply spiritual journey of faith. And so uh, I'm going to be doing that. I've, I've had a rule of life that I've done a pretty decent job of keeping keeping track of, some better than others. Uh, but as we move into this new season, uh, I'm reevaluating and adjusting a number of things because I want to make sure that I'm intentional about guarding this next space. Uh, and the last thing I want to say about the rule of life in terms of this week's lectures is boundaries. 
one of the things that the rule of life helps us to do is to establish necessary boundaries around our lives and say, um, I'm willing to do this or I'm willing to give this much time, but then I'm also going to bracket certain things out from around me so that, so that there's not a, a time a time suck from things that I don't want them to do. I can be attentive to. And for some of us, that may mean that we boundary our social media use. For some of us, we may boundary um, how often and when I'm willing to take text messages and emails from others. For some of us, we may boundary um, uh, how much time I'm gonna give towards my own physical well-being. Uh, so what are the boundaries that you need to put into place in your rule of life that's gonna help foster the kind of um, catalytic I say catalytic, that's probably not the word that I want to use, uh, to foster the kind of environment uh, that that is going to really serve to fuel and refresh in and sustain the the long-term uh, journey that you are on uh, in, this, in this following of Jesus. So I want you to look at those, I want you to think through those, and I want you to process that in light of the assignment of, of writing your own uh, rule of life.